In today's video, we're going to talk about debugging in Xcode. Specifically, we'll talk about some intermediate things that we can do to identify and resolve issues in our application. Before we jump into things, start by dropping a like down below. Hit subscribe if you're new here. Let's open up Xcode and we're going to jump into a existing project that I've got already. It is a dessert application. And first thing that we're going to do here is actually give it a run in our simulator so we can actually see what this app is all about. It's a little irrelevant as to what the app's functionality is. The important thing we'll focus on today is the various debugging techniques and breakpointing techniques that we'll look at momentarily. So this application in a nutshell basically shows you a variety of desserts and dessert recipes. We can browse a variety of different categories. We'll see trending, we can search, et cetera, et cetera. So we are going to start off in the browse controller here. And the first thing we're gonna look at in said controller is breakpointing. Now breakpointing is pretty simple. A lot of you are probably familiar with it. We can go ahead and click the line number. And when we are running our application, when we come across one of these line numbers or this code path, our application will actually pause there. So let's actually move this down to perhaps here to line number 117. And this function gets called when we actually tap on the categories button at the top right in the simulator here. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on it and we'll see that we have paused our execution. And we see a whole lot of nonsense on the left. So let's talk about what everything here is. So on the left panel, we'll see all of our frames in terms of the stack that has actually executed all the code that has run. In the middle here, we'll see a bunch of nonsense for assembly code, but the most important thing that we can talk about here is we see that we declared a VC here, and we can actually hover over it and see the memory address and open it up to see various properties on it. But the more interesting thing that we are gonna talk about first and foremost is down here in the console. So here we have the LLDB, the LLVM compiler debugger. We can start by typing out PO for print object. And let's say I wanna print out the VC that we've declared here. So we print it out and we see it's from our desserts target. And it is in fact a category selection view controller with its respective memory address. Now we can actually do PO VC .title to get the specific title and we can see that it's an optional string and right now it's assigned to the string of categories pretty cool we can also use p shorthand of po for objective c prints and we can actually do the same thing so pvc and here we get a more verbose uh, dump of the printed object so we'll see it's a ui kit view controller we can see it's base responder so in a nutshell here what i usually do is po for you know very quick debug descriptions of an object p to get a much more verbose uh, output here in our console. We can also do variable frame VC and let's see, I believe it's actually a variable or frame variable is what I'm looking for. So the current frame and the variable VC on here. And once again, we'll get the dump of it like so. So that's how we can very quickly uh, and trivially, I'll say, inspect what's going on. So let's do a couple more interesting things. So let's say we have this, uh, you know, this breakpoint set here and I can hit the play button. And of course we'll see our categories view controller be presented here. And let's see, I made a critical mistake as a developer and oh shoot, the title here should have said hello world and my designer's all upset now. And a lot of projects nowadays at large companies are very big and they take a while to compile. And I don't wanna just change a string and have to build the whole thing again. That's a little ridiculous. So what I can actually do is through breakpoints, I can inject code without having to rerun or rebuild my application. So let's talk about how to do that. We can either right click or double click the breakpoints and we get a context menu to do some pretty cool stuff. What I'm gonna do on this action here is click it and it'll turn into debugger command. And here I can actually inject other code to be actually swapped here at the time of execution. So I'm gonna actually drag this breakpoint down here just so it's set after this entire view controller is set up, the VC up above. We'll click it and in the debug command, I'm gonna type in expression, hopefully spelled that correctly. And now I want the VC title to say, hello world. So inside of here, we'll say hello world, maybe with an exclamation mark since we're excited about it. And we'll go ahead and just press enter. 
Now we'll come back to our simulator and hit this. We're going to hit the same breakpoints. We're going to hit the play button. And would you look at that? Now it says, hello world. One thing that's kind of annoying is the breakpoint. We don't want it to hit. We just want it to show hello world. So we can double click it again. And we can hit this checkbox that says automatically continue after evaluating actions. In a nutshell, what that means is run this debugger command and just continue. No need to stop. We already know what's going to happen. So let's go ahead and give that a try. We'll dismiss this controller, press it again. And almost like magic, we've changed the actual VC title assignment that is uh, categories here through the breakpoints. Now, of course, you want to remember you want to actually change your code when you are done debugging. But this is a nice shorthand way to actually make changes without having to recompile your application. Now, that's pretty cool and all. Let's talk about some more interesting things that we can do. So I'll get rid of that breakpoint and we're going to toss the breakpoint here on line 116 where that view controller title is set. Once again, we'll dismiss this controller here and I'm going to hit all categories again. We'll come back here and one thing we can actually do uh, on this line is we can once again add an expression to skip over this line. Now this is commonly referred to as stepping over or stepping into or stepping uh, out of and there are respective buttons down here to do this. So if I actually hover over these, we can actually say this will step over and it gives you a nice uh, description in terms of this will step over the instruction. We can step into, we can step out of. This is uh, pretty trivial and self-explanatory so I won't go too deep into that. Let's talk about some more interesting things we can do and that brings us to symbolic breakpoints. So in our application, we have a bunch of symbols, either instances of things like a UI label or methods themselves. So for example, we have a method down here, which is category button tapped. And let's say we don't know, in fact, where this function is in our application, or we might have multiple instances of a function with the same name in this application. And let's say we want to you know, hit a breakpoint whenever we hit one of these uh, function calls. So at the bottom left here, once we've selected the breakpoint uh, icon in the left pane, we can hit this plus button and we get a variety of different breakpoint styles that we can configure. There's swift errors, exception, symbolic, runtime, there's a whole host of them. We're going to stick with the symbolic breakpoints. And here I'm going to say, go ahead and whenever the category button tapped function is called, we should hit a breakpoint. So we're going to hit enter and it's going to pop up over here. And the most important thing is, it'll basically try to resolve in your application where that symbol exists. And if nothing pops up underneath what you have basically entered as a symbol, that means that Xcode wasn't able to find that breakpoint. So in this case, it looks to have found two instances of it. One is a objective C selector, and here we have it as just the Swift function. So it's treating it as two. We'll go ahead and here we'll tap on the all categories again, and we'll see that we have hit that particular symbol, even though we don't have a breakpoint established here on the line directly. Now this is a pretty trivial example, but of course you can actually go pretty crazy with this. So let me actually add another one. We'll hit plus symbolic breakpoints. Every single UI view class has a layout sub views on it. So perhaps I want to hit this breakpoint every single time layout sub views is called throughout our application. So we'll go ahead and add it and we'll see a ridiculous number of these are resolved, of course, off of a variety of views, collection views, table collection, different cells, et cetera, et cetera. So this will be something that gets hit every single time. So I'll continue the execution of the app. And perhaps we select this and we see, of course, it was hit. Now, where in fact was that layout sub view hit? We can actually see over here, it's right on this collection view cell. We can actually see the uh, trace in terms of where this call originated from. And we can actually step back one by one and you'll see the assembly here changing in the middle. So some pretty cool stuff we can do already with symbolic breakpoints and injecting expressions. One last thing that I want to touch on is actually printing out your view hierarchy. So a lot of you might be familiar with the fact that sometimes when you have applications with a lot of nested subviews, be it even through SwiftUI or UIKit in this example, and let me actually get rid of these breakpoints, sometimes things are overlapping and things are not actually um, you know, rendering how they should. 
And sometimes to get to the bottom of it, what we do is we can select this little icon, which is Xcode's View Debugger. You can debug your view hierarchy. And I've got a separate video on this, and it'll actually show you a representation with a hierarchical tree on the left here of your various views, controllers, and UI components that are in play. You can also, of course, drag this around, looking pretty cool, and we can use a slider to you know, expand the hierarchy here in terms of the layers, in terms of what's on top of what. Now, this is all great and all, but sometimes this is overkill. Sometimes all that we wanna do is see a, a printed out recursive representation of this in our console. And the good news is we can do that. Uh, the bad news is it's a little bit of a verbose thing to type out, but we're gonna type it out together. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit this pause button to pause our execution. And what we're gonna type is expr for expression, dash L for objective C. And the next thing you wanna do is dash capital O, dash dash, and in square brackets, UI view controller, underscore, and we're gonna say print hierarchy, hopefully I spelled that correctly, and hit return. And what we're gonna see here is a big dump of stuff, but let's actually look at it to see what's going on because it's not all that complicated. So what we'll see is the root controller in our application, which is dessert, so that's our target name, is a tab bar controller. Now this tab bar controller hangs on at that level to four other controllers. It's got a navigation, another navigation, another one, another one, uh, and actually, it looks like there's a fifth one here, five navigation controllers. And that makes sense because we've got five tabs connected to this tab bar controller. If we look at this fourth tab, we'll also see that this has a saved view controller and a favorites view controller that it's hanging on to respectively. Now, in terms of the saved view controller, it also has a grocery items view controller. So where the heck are these coming from? Let's actually run this application so we can go to that fourth tab. And in fact, this screen here that's connected to this segment, and when I tap on grocery, this screen here is another controller. So what's really nice about that command is if we go and let's say present this categories and want to print out what the hierarchy is after uh, presenting it, we can just run this command. And now we'll see on that third tab, I believe, let's see which one it is. Uh, what we have, actually on the second tab, let's see if I can find it, on our browse controller, we went ahead and pressed that button and we should have presented a navigation controller with a category selection view controller, which is at the bottom here. So one really good way to inspect you know, what's going on hierarchically in terms of your controller situation is by running this command. Now there is a simple way where you can alias different commands. So I can say command uh, alias, and we can actually enter in, I don't know, maybe H-E-I for hierarchy, and we can alias this command. You can alias a bunch of commands so you can be lazy and shorthanded because engineers are some of the laziest people in the world, admittedly, I will say myself, but that's how we can actually print this out. Now, I've been deep in the weeds uh, with debug, you know, things we can do in Xcode lately, and I plan to do a variety of videos on this since Xcode has a ton of things to offer that are, I would consider intermediate as well as debatably advanced. If you're new to the channel and are into that, make sure to hit subscribe and that bell icon to stay up to date with new videos. This is all I've got for you guys today. Some quick primers in terms of debug techniques. Hit that like button if you haven't done so already. Leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. Let me know if there's anything, you know, in terms of breakpointing that you do that I didn't cover here today that would be good to share with the rest rest of the community. Thanks again for watching. I will catch y'all in the next one.